He will land, uh, be on the ground for several hours touring the heart of the devastation in Lahaina, speaking, of course, to local, county, state leaders, um, making his rounds and talking to the families of victims, of course, but also expected to meet a little friction. Not only are people unhappy about the local and state and county response and about the speed of it, but also about sort of the perceived lack of communication from federal officials, including the president, who took a while to make a statement that was substantial. Ah, yes, Steve Patterson, Democrat, reporting for NBC News from Hawaii. They didn't show this video, though, where the motorcade was driving by and Hawaiians were expressing themselves in a colorful fashion, as people are wont to do, likely to do in circumstances like this. Joe Biden's motorcade going by, getting a little uh, hi, how are you from the local Hawaiians. Wow, he's finally here. Wow, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, thanks for nothing. Thanks for nothing. F*** you. F*** you. F*** you. F*** you. Ah, Joe Biden being welcomed by uh, the natives. The natives are restless, I suppose. I didn't, they didn't call him a howley, did they? they Howley is a uh, slur used by uh, Pacific Islanders for uh, Anglo-European Caucasians, you know. It's not a particularly bad slur. I guess we can put up with that one easily enough. But but uh, there it is. Yeah, uh, Steve Patterson, NBC Fake News. So, well, you know, with a president not being received as warmly as perhaps he might like. And then he made a fool of himself again and again and was off the rails and off script and um, talking about himself. And now another story about me, because a long time ago, we had a kitchen fire in our house, and it was put out in 20 minutes, but but never mind that. And that is the story that the kitchen fire was was put out in about 20 minutes, uh, 15 years ago. And uh, he said, gosh, I almost lost my Corvette and my wife and my cat, you know, but... Uh, Joe Biden, that's our guy. There he is. Womp, womp, womp. All right, let's go to the telephones, Michael. Let's talk to the nice people. Um, well, I tell you, I've been getting a lot of great communications from people today, including a relative of the mayor of Maui, who I think is probably in our area, right? Uh, Real Housewives, connected to the Real Housewives uh, and of uh, WMAL, great friends of our humble radio broadcast, The Chris Plant Show. Uh, fun Facebook posting there. And also uh, great stories being fed in from Chicago and and Belize. And Belize. Because, you know, Al Gore's amazing internet. We're everywhere. We're everywhere. We have listeners in uh, Sweden and in Germany and in Brazil and in Belize. Thanks to Al Gore because, yeah, because of the internet that he created. We're very thankful. I know you are, too. All right, let's go to the telephones. Let's go to Tony calling from Tampa, Florida. Anthony, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Chris, thank you, man. Uh, you, uh, you're the only one who plays that uh, Jimi Hendrix, that great genius Jimi Hendrix. Uh, uh-huh. He was a paratrooper, uh, and he defended our participation in World War, uh, excuse me, in the Vietnam War, unlike uh, Bruce Springsteen and Billy Joel. I'd rather listen to a vacuum cleaner than Billy Joel and Bruce Springsteen. But what I wanted to say, Chris... <laughs> and you're right. Jimi Hendrix from Seattle, Washington, was in the United States Army. I believe he was 101st Airborne. And, uh, That's what, right. And, uh, and he was a big supporter. He used to shock his rock and roll uh, friends by supporting the fight against the communists in Vietnam. He didn't, he didn't uh, take to the Army very well, and they didn't take to him very well. But he was there, and he, and he uh, liked his time in the Army, and he supported our uh, fighting the commies in Vietnam. Little-known Jimi Hendrix uh, fun fact. Thank you for that, Tony. What a, what a great genius. When, when it comes to music, what a great genius he was. Yeah. Anyway, what I want to say, Chris, is this. Uh, I live in Florida, and, and uh, Florida is the fastest-growing uh, state in the, in the country as, when, when it comes to economics. This country, this, excuse me, this state is growing at a 5.4 uh, GDP economics, uh, economically, uh, and that's because of Ron DeSantis. Uh, what a great job he's doing in this state, man. Uh, uh, we need, we, you know what we need, Chris? 
We need some young blood in the White House to move the ball downfield, man. So you are, you, uh, Tony, in Tampa, Florida, are ready to leave President Donald Trump behind and go with Ron DeSantis in Florida. Listen, I like Trump the way he did all the rest of the things he did, man. But he's got a lot of baggage. And white women won't vote for him. Black men won't vote for him. I don't think so. I'm not sure. But uh, uh, white women won't vote for him. Uh, and we need, excuse me, white women and black men and so- Democrats, when I told you Democrats around here, they like Ron DeSantis. Uh, so he'll get the white women, he'll get the black men, and he'll get a lot of Democrats. And I think he'll win. He's well, done a great job in this state. Excuse me, Chris. He's done a great job in this state. 5.4 GDP. It's, when, if you've got 3% GDP, you're cooking. This is 5.4. Fantastic. What a great job he's done, man. Well, I tell you, he um, uh, now you you love him, and there's a, there's a lot to love about Ron DeSantis, and certainly about Florida and uh, DeSantis' handling of the Wuhan Red Death and all of that. You know, the Democrats are trying to well, they aren't trying; they're bringing back mask mandates around the country, college campuses, and private corporations bring bringing back this week. I'm talking about uh, mask mandates. And I don't think Ron DeSantis is going to allow any of that stuff in Florida. California is doing it. College campuses are doing it. Big Hollywood studio, Lionsgate, is doing it, bringing back mask mandates. And uh, Ron DeSantis has done a great job on a whole lot of things. Now, at the same time, he's not polling very well at the moment. And President Trump is just mopping the floor with everybody in the polls. You know that. And, in fact, one of the— yeah, I know that, Chris. Yeah, go ahead. Excuse me, Chris. I know I understand that. I don't understand what they don't know his record here in Florida. This state leads the country in economic growth. I mean, economics is the number one commodity uh, in the, on the docket. That's it, man. Economics. Then you break it down from there. Uh, what, what, 5.4% GDP. That's off the charts, man. Yeah. Put him in the White House. Let's get some young blood in the White House and move the ball downfield, man. I'm kind of tired of these octogenarians like Biden and Trump. Yeah, well, I, you know, I, I don't think you're alone. But President Trump, I, t- I tell you again, in the CBS News poll now finds, what do they put him at, 62% with Republican voters, which is more than all the other candidates combined. Uh, but I do want to, since you called in uh, from Florida, Tony, and from Tampa, where I actually, my best girl and I have a condo in Tampa that, uh, that we rent out to other people. I've never been there. But let me share this uh, story. Let me share this story with you. Um, New York loses $1 trillion in Wall Street business as firms flee. This is a New York Post story. And there is another story today in uh, in the uh, uh, Bloomberg News organization. But let me get to this one for a second, because New York City, you know, with the crime and throwing people in front of subways and getting people getting bashed over the head, on the sidewalk and all the murders and the theft and the looting and, of course, the taxes and and the Democrats are sucking in all the illegal aliens and and they're going to have to steal everybody's money uh, to make anything work. But listen to this from the from Shannon Thaler at uh, The New York Post. uh, Today's story, a giant sucking sound is coming out of Wall Street. And it's siphoning staggering sums of money out of the Big Apple while handing businesses in Florida and other states farther south uh, the uh, big pile of money. Now, nearly 160 Wall Street firms have moved their headquarters out of New York. Let me say that again. Nearly 160 Wall Street firms have moved their headquarters. They're Wall Street firms, but they're not on Wall Street anymore. How can you be a Wall Street firm when you're not on Wall Street? Well, they got the hell out because the Democrats have burned New York City to the ground. They're burning Chicago to the ground. They're burning Washington, D.C. to the ground, burning San Francisco and, and, and Seattle and Portland and Los Angeles to the ground. And people are fleeing like these places are on fire. Nearly 160 Wall Street firms have moved their headquarters out of New York City since the end of 2019, taking nearly $1 trillion. That's right, that's trillion with a T in assets under management with them, according to new data uh, from 17,000 companies compiled by Bloomberg. 
looking to dodge rampant crime, stiff taxes, and increasingly exorbitant cost of living, 158 fed-up firms representing a whopping $993 billion in assets have packed up and left the Big Apple, taking thousands of high-paying employees with them, the data showed. Icon Capital Management, one of the biggies headed by billionaire corporate raider Carl Icon, is among the most prominent firms to decamp to the Sunshine State. That's Florida. And Ron DeSantis, who is an anti-capitalist, he's not anti-business, fled in August of 2020. The firm ditched his posh Manhattan digs atop Fifth Avenue's General Motors building in favor of a 14-story office complex in a Miami suburb. Icon's firm, which manages $22.2 billion in assets, now conducts business from, well, less than a mile away from uh, his mansion. He's got a mansion in Indian Creek Village, which is very nice. And these hedge fund managers and all these companies, they're fleeing. You got the crime, you've got the mayhem, you, you've got, they've just, the Democrats are destroying the world. And that's because they're not liberals, they're the left. And the left destroys the world. The Bloomberg News hey, organization. Yeah, yeah, Tony, go ahead. Just quickly, Chris. Over the weekend, 40 people were shot in Chicago, seven dead. Right. Yeah, I mentioned that a little while ago. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, I got family in Chicago, and I go to Chicago, and I visit Chicago. My friends go to Chicago. And uh, the Democrats are, you know, why is that happening, Tony? Give me your assessment. Why is that happening? The shootings, the killings, uh, uh, the carjackings. What's up with that? I'll tell you what it is. It's fatherlessness in the black community. That's what it is, man. Fatherlessness. They, uh, um, what Larry Elder explains it beautifully. It's fatherlessness in the black community. They're just running wild to a large extent. Trump wanted to send the uh, National Guard into Chicago to, 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 to stop that, and uh, they call him a racist. Yeah, that's right. And a fascist. That's right. And then they deployed the. And now in D.C., the Democrats uh, on the city council want to deploy the National Guard in D.C. because the crime is so out of control here. Yeah. uh, Again, I I, I guess uh, all I can do is talk about Larry Elder. He he understands that subject. uh, He does. uh, And I saw him uh, recently talking to Charlemagne, the misspelled God, and he uh, gave Charlemagne, the misspelled God, what for on all of this. And that was one of the topics that Larry Elder covered. So you're in Tampa, Florida now, but you're not originally from Tampa, Florida. Where are you from originally? No, no Chris, I'm from uh, Long Island, New York. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know what Biden said during the campaign? What did he, he say? Said, if you're black and you don't vote for me, you're not black. How do you how do you pump that out of your mouth? How That's do right. you how do you how do you say something like that? Yeah. And denigrate a whole group of people. I he, mean, where do you come from with that sort of thing? He said that to Charlemagne, the misspelled God, and Larry Elder called him on that the other day, too. Larry Elder was great when he with uh, Charlemagne, the misspelled God, the other day. I call him the misspelled God because he, he, he calls himself Charlemagne the God, which is humble, but he spells the, T-H-A, so it's uh, Charlemagne the misspelled God, uh, and that's the, you know, he should be called on that. We're not trying to, at least I'm not trying to uh, raise a generation of illiterates, but the Democrat Party certainly is. Tony, thank you for the call, buddy. That's uh, that's good stuff. And Larry Elder is correct on that issue. That is a, if not the central issue when it comes to rampant crime in big cities in America. I, I uh, said yesterday, if you drew a circle around the 12 or 15 most populous cities in the United States of America and eliminated the crime in those cities, the rest of the country has a crime la- cr- crime rate like Sweden. But never mind that. Also, the Bloomberg News Agency, your evening briefing, Wall Street watches $1 trillion go south. And uh, Bloomberg explains that all these Wall Street firms, Goldman Sachs and so many others, have uh, fled New York City because of the crime and the taxes, and they're turning it into hell because they're the left, they're not liberals. And they're going to the Carolinas and to Florida and to Texas, where people are still free and New York and California, and they're also fleeing California um, in huge, huge numbers as well. And Bloomberg, Bloomberg points that out. Uh, Tony, thanks. Thanks, buddy. Hey, breaking news. President Joe Biden's plan to introduce a digital dollar is already nefariously underway. And it's vital to understand the potential consequences here because 
Contrary to their claims, believe it or not, the initiative is not in your best interest. It's not in my best. It's not in America's best interest. And time is of the essence. So taking action now is absolutely necessary to protect your savings and your retirement and your future. You can help protect your savings from the risks of the digital dollar by diversifying with gold and silver IRAs. And the best way to get started there is by calling my friends, my great friends at American Alternative Assets. Call American Alternative Assets today at 888-4-GOLD-20. The number four, the word gold, the number 20. 888-446-5360. They'll give you all the guidance and the smarts you need on safeguarding your retirement savings. Say no to Joe Biden's digital dollar. Call 888-4-GOLD-20. 888-446-5360. Call them today. Individual results may vary. There is no guarantee that past performance will be indicative of future results. Seek your own legal tax investment and financial advice before opening an account. Yes, sir. Yeah, fleeing California, fleeing New York, going to Florida, going to Texas, going to the Carolinas. Bump, bump, bump. A trillion, a trillion dollars. You know, uh, Joe Biden's make that made that sound like a, kind of an ordinary dollar figure. It's not. Hey, it's Chris Plant, excited to tell you about our July 2024 Listener Sea Cruise. We'll be sailing around the British Isles, visiting Scotland and Ireland. Please join us. Book by this July 31st for extra savings. Visit chrisplantcruise.com. And I mentioned the businesses fleeing New York City and California. Wall Street firms no longer Wall Street. Now they're just firms. But Bloomberg has the story as well. In fact, the New York Post started with the Bloomberg story, Wall Street watches $1 trillion go south. And Natasha Solo Leons writes, the relocation of a small portion of the American financial industry from New York and California to the U.S. South has been measured anecdotally, often one office at a time over the past few years. Elliott Management decamped for West Palm Beach. Alliance Bernstein to Nashville. Charles Schwab landed in suburban Dallas. But now, perhaps for the first time, there are hard numbers quantifying the scope of the nascent exodus. Both New York and California have in the past three years lost firms that managed close to $1 trillion of assets, Bloomberg calculated. The departures from the Northeast and the West Coast have meant the loss of thousands of high-paying jobs, in turn straining city and state finances by sapping tax revenue. Commercial property markets also have lost valued tenants, just as they've been struggling with the new realities of hybrid work. And the post-Wuhan era. Don't forget about the post-Wuhan era. Hey, the Democrats have hired a plane with a banner to harass the debate tomorrow night. I've got that coming up. So the Wall Street firms are fleeing Wall Street. Now they're just firms. And Wall Street is just Wall Street without firms. California fleeing California because the Democrats are demolishing and destroying these places because they secured enough power that their mental illnesses are now, uh, you know, they're they're in charge. The mental people are in charge. Now, in New York City, with a trillion dollars fleeing to Texas and Florida, Florida and Texas and the Carolinas to get away from, you know, the people that they voted into office for the most part. Uh, A couple of other stories out of uh, New York City and New York State, for that matter. The State University of Buffalo, because, you know, they're a sanctuary state and sanctuary city, New York City. And then they have open borders and a generous welfare state, which is suicide for any country. Uh, But the Democrats are murdering us, so it's really not suicide. They're doing it on purpose. Uh, And here's the story from the New York Post today. 82% of New Yorkers call migrant influx a serious problem. 58% want to stop the flow, according to a new poll 
That's the flow of illegal aliens that the Democrats are waving in from whatever. I read this story last week about the guy that was arrested by ICE. The Democrats don't want to cooperate with uh, ICE, their cities, their police jurisdictions, don't want to cooperate with immigration and customs enforcement. They grabbed a guy who is a fugitive from Brazil who murdered 11 people in a massacre and escaped. He was sentenced to 275 years and 11 months in prison. And he uh, escaped from Brazil and came to the United States and was working at somebody's house in, where was it, New Hampshire? I believe it was New Hampshire. The guy murdered 11, 11 people there. And the Democrats gave him a job at a house in New Hampshire because they're the left. They're not liberals. They're insane. And oh, then the, the, I told you the story also last week, the other day, about the MS-13 guy. His, his nickname, his code name with the gang uh, is Piranha. And he uh, came to us from, from Central America. And he had murdered untold numbers about uh, torture. He had been convicted. This other guy, he had been convicted of 11 murders. And, uh, and then he was waved into the country by the Democrats. And this MS-13 guy, murder, torture, all this stuff, uh, his uh, code name Piranha and uh, his gang name Piranha and all this stuff. Now, 82% of New Yorkers call migrant influx a serious problem. 58% want to stop the flow, according to a new poll. And the New York Post has the story, but the New York Times does not. Mm-mm-mm. Slow the flow, the new poll released Tuesday revealed. That's uh, this morning. New Yorkers... Huge majorities, Democrats, Republicans, independents, upstaters, and downstaters overwhelmingly say the recent influx of migrants, that's illegal aliens flowing across an open border because of Joe Biden, to New York. Well, New York is a border state, after all. It borders Canada, but the Democrats are murdering the country. This is their plan. A Siena College pollster, Stephen Greenberg, found that everybody from every stripe and every part of the state says it's a serious problem and it must stop, all right? But for Democrats, uh, no. They'll call you a racist and then uh, put an MS-13 member in your daughter's bedroom because, you know, that's what the Democrats are all about. They're, they're not on our side. Boy, are they not on our side. Not even close. Amazing, amazing stuff. And uh, that's not all. Because it gets, uh, you know, we have the header today. You can get our stories run down at uh, the Chris Plant Twitter and our Facebook and Instagram. I'm looking at my stories sheet now for the show, and you can you can find the stories that I'm talking about here. The next story, also New York Post, Randall's Island in New York, $20 million per month. The migrant shelter there on Randall's Island takes in first asylum seekers as capacity expands to 3,000. The capacity is expanding on Randall's Island of illegal aliens because the Democrats open border and, of course, the, uh, you know, sanctuary city thing. So what, what is uh, 20 million divided by 3,000 per month? That is a per month figure that the Democrats are inflicting upon New York City and themselves because... They are not on our side. They're just not on our side. That's a fact. So what is that? It's not if it were uh, 2,000, right, then it would be, uh, you know, $20 million for a month for one location for 3,000 illegal aliens, and they want to blame Texas Governor Greg Abbott or something. Also, State University of New York uh, 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 in Buffalo, SUNY Buffalo, Booting migrants from dorms, that's illegal aliens, from dorms over student safety concerns. Critics rip move as prejudiced. That's right, you're racist. You don't want to put MS-13 in the college dorms with your daughter, your precious daughter that you've raised to be a decent human being. The Democrats just filled the dorms with MS-13. Maybe they got that uh, another Brazilian that murdered 11 people in a massacre and tortured them and all that stuff. SUNY Buffalo State University is evicting 44 migrants, that is to say illegal aliens, from its dorms 
After parents raised concerns, it was fine with the university administrators. After parents raised concerns over student safety. Uh, do they want to be transgender migrants? Because then the Democrats would have to take them in. But an asylum seeker advocate claims the, mood, the, the move smacks of prejudice, naturally. Officials at the state university abruptly canceled an agreement with a local community group that placed dozens of migrants, that means illegal aliens, at the upstate school in May, citing parental worries in the wake of separate sex assault charges against two migrants bust north from New York City, Buffalo News reported. We are a welcoming, we are welcoming our students back to campus Thursday. We wanted to ensure the best possible learning environment for our students and smooth functioning of our university operations, interim school president Bonia Durland said in a statement, according to the Buffalo News. But there they are. They're, they're uh, packing the illegal aliens into the dormitories, and then they want to move your kids in with them. And, yeah, you get the mass murder, 11 people from Brazil, no problem in New Hampshire. The Democrats waved them in, came through New York. ICE arrests them. The Democrats don't want to cooperate with ICE. The Your Democrat Party has lost its mind. Honestly, if you're a Democrat, how do you explain yourself? Good Lord. Are you a carjacker, too? Or are you a... Good God, you people... Uh, but it, uh, you know, the hits keep coming because it just goes on and on in amazing ways. The Daily Mail has the story, and the Washington Post doesn't. FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA officials splashing taxpayer cash on $1,000 a night Maui hotel rooms. Multiple Maui hotels being taken over by FEMA at $1,000 a night per room. And it's exclusive to the Daily Mail. Now, the entire American media was there for uh, 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 five hours yesterday with Joe Biden. Uh, they didn't bother to look at this. You got, you know, the news media, have you noticed that it's like the war in Ukraine? They're just not covering it. Why are they not covering the war in Ukraine? Why are they not, uh, why, why are the anchor men and satellite trucks not in Maui covering this story? Oh, because it makes the Democrats look bad. That's the actual answer. So exclusive at the Daily Mail, FEMA officials are staying at $1,000 a night luxury hotels, plural, in Maui amid recovery efforts in Lahaina. FEMA officials have been slammed by Maui locals for their slow response to the devastating wildfires that ripped through Lahaina earlier this month. But the Daily Mail can reveal they're staying at three different five-star hotels. Sure they are. They're at the Fairmont Kia Lanai, the Four Seasons, and the Grand Wailea Astoria. I assume that's a Waldorf Astoria hotel. During the recovery efforts, the federal government rates, they get federal government rates for this week at all three resorts, started an eye-popping $1,000 per room, company sources have revealed. Your Democrat Party, here they are. Deutschland, Deutschland, Uber Alles. Aren't they amazing? Yes, sir. Man, oh, man. I am telling you. Now, let me uh, share with you another story that uh, the Democrats are, are causing, and it has to do with gender and uh, mental illness. That's, that's the reality of it. That's the short and the long. Because a young woman who is a, uh, an athlete was invited to speak at a Davis, California public library. There is a major university there. And as soon as she began to speak, she was shouted down, interfered with, interrupted by leftists in the room, uh, some of whom are apparently cross-dressing and stuff because they're mental cases. They're, they're Democrats. And the whole Democrat party is apparently suffering from gender dysphoria. Uh, and this young woman, Sophia Lurie, wanted to, well, she was invited to speak, and she was there to speak in defense of female athletes competing against other female athletes, girls against girls, women against women. And it sounded kind of like this when Sophia Lurie began to speak at the public library in Davis, California. Before we start, I just want to share a little bit about myself. 
So, questions are safe for the end. Thank you very much. You, you will be asked to leave if you interrupt during the middle of the meeting. Please respect the library rules. She's misgendering. Well, how do you know she's a she? You just called her she. She's misgendering. The ridiculous clowns at the Sacramento Bee, my journalism teacher was an old Sacramento Bee guy. Davis Public Library speaker misgendered trans athletes. That's actually the headline. Did her free speech cross a line? Let me answer that question. No. Uh, as I've explained before, I learned this from a great reporter, David Martin at CBS News, covered the Pentagon forever. Did her free speech ca cross a line? Uh, he always said, anytime a headline has a question mark, the answer is always no. All right? But here it is, Yolo County Moms for Liberty build their Sunday evening event at Davis Public Library as a forum on fair and safe sports for girls. But the ouster of their speaker from the facility has raised a different point of debate. Where are the limits of free speech in public spaces? They got louder and louder. She just wanted a young lady, an athlete. She said that uh, women should compete against women, not men. And, you know, you know what a biological man is? A man. You know what a biological woman is? A woman. You know what a biological idiot is? An idiot. This is the library. I will be. I, 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 you know, any transgender female is being called male in, in sporting events with females. If that happens, it's not following our code. This is a Democrat man who might think he's a woman who stand, and I think he worked for the library. Walked up, he did. He worked for the library. He had his library badge on. And he walked up and he stopped her because he demanded that she stop because she misgendered someone by saying, you can't have biological men competing against women. She wasn't even talking about specific people. But this mentally ill man uh, stood up and uh, interrupted her, interfered with her, confronted her, menaced her. Uh, and he was a man... Uh, and she was just speaking English like a normal, rational person. At 10 years old, like I said, all I dreamed was about being a college soccer player. A dream I knew I could achieve as long as I worked hard and put my mind to it. And at 18, I was able to live out my dream. But current 10-year-old girls cannot live out the same dream as long as men are allowed to compete in women's sports. So now, no matter Men. how hard girls work, no, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. Okay. Now, a bunch of mentally ill Democrats. Mentally ill Democrats, a group of them stood up, and they had their transgender flags, and she's just trying to speak. When I was 10 years old, I dreamed of playing soccer in college. At 18, I was able to live out my dream. But now, young girls have to play against men. Can you, wait, can we, why am I being asked to leave? Because you were talking about, it was mid you were talking about men and females. I have a biological, here, we have a licensed California attorney right yes. here. She's being told to leave by the library employees that work for the state. They should be wearing armbands. They really should. Uh, just amazing stuff dragged out. And then she, the, the lovely young lady, an intelligent young lady, appeared on the Fox News channel last night with Sean Hannity. I didn't even have the ability to share my story. I began with saying that men don't belong in women's sports and was immediately cut off. Because anytime you say man, they have a mental meltdown. It was extremely upsetting to have a government official violate my First Amendment rights, and I don't want any other American or any other girl to experience what I experienced last night. A library employee, a government official, give a lefty a thimble full of power and they'll abuse it. Uh, just amazing stuff. Um, Sophia um, is learning a little something about what the left is uh, is all about. And uh, Riley Gaines with the Riley Gaines Foundation was also on with her and Sean Hannity last night. And I first just want to say how proud I am of Sophia um, to be in that environment where you have hecklers, you have protesters, you have people shouting you down. Men, women, men dressed as women, women dressed as men. Um, that's a really, really scary environment. But to stick your ground, stay true to your conviction, and speak your heart, um, that's a true testament of someone who's brave. The Democrat Party is a mental illness, honestly. I think Michael Savage used to say something like that, didn't Very close to that. Uh, liberalism is a mental illness. Uh, 
These people are unwell, and they're un-American, and they're anti-Western. They're going to roll us back to not just pre-Columbian, pre-Christopher Columbus days. I, I, I got to tell you, these they're primitives. They are, they're mental. There are two genders, male and female. The chromosomes prove it. We mapped the chromosomes. We know these things to be true. We hold these truths to be self-evident. And another thing that is evident, these people are mentally ill and they must be stopped. Yesterday, there was a great video posted on Al Gore's Amazing Internet on X, which was never called Twitter. Just kidding. I'm just tired of hearing which used to be called Twitter. But a great uh, video posted of a, a small airplane, a single engine overwing, probably a Cessna 172, flying uh, over the beaches of Delaware uh, by Joe Biden's house, one of his houses. He's a very wealthy man on a government salary. And there's a Cessna 172 flying over with a banner behind it, you know, a big banner. And the big banner says, Prosecute Hunter Biden. It says, Prosecute Hunter Biden. And it's over the Joe Biden beaches where he drags around the beach chair like weekend at Bernie's. Well, now the Democrats, being as unoriginal as they are, they have decided that they're going to uh, rent a small airplane like a Cessna 172 single engine overwing, and they're going to tow a banner behind it in Milwaukee, where the, the uh, Republican presidential debate is tomorrow. And my, my great friend Vince Colonnese, who you can hear from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Time on WMAL out of Washington, which is my mothership, my friend Vince Colonnese uh, posted, of course, the DNC's answer to the GOT, GOP debate is to throw a drag show. Throw a drag show, see? Because they're going to rent a plane, and they're going to drag a banner behind it and have their little drag show. The DNC, actually the actual National Democratic National Committee, has booked a plane to fly around Milwaukee on Wednesday night dragging a banner reading GOP 2024, colon. They love their colons. They had to get the colon on the banner dragging behind the drag show. And it says GOP 2024, colon, a race for the extreme MAGA base. This is the Democrat Party's talking point. I hope they don't burn Milwaukee to the ground and loot it and attack all the police and burn the police cars and smash out all the storefronts and, and loot every store in the city, as the Democrats so often do. Yeah, so they, they're they putting on a drag show. How typical, how ordinary, how unoriginal that uh, they copy the Delaware guys. <laughs> 